Well, good afternoon. Welcome to another little video. Um, as promised, this one's going to be about faith. So um, I just thought before I start this little video, I'd make a little disclaimer, I guess, which is pretty funny for uh, <laughs> what would I disclaim against, really, if God is everything. But in that sense of um, the preamble of things, you know, like it's... Uh, it's impossible to make a video other than if I were to just sit here and uh, <laughs> open my mind. But um, um, impossible to make a video of the spoken word without that being um, through the dualistic premise, through the me and the you and the mine and, and, and yours and all of that sort of thing. So... Um, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to accept where I find myself with my feet on the ground with this bodily avatar thing and um, project out into the world the certainty of my mind uh, regarding the idea of faith um, in uh, this time of our Lord. <laughs> I don't know what we're in, August 2021 or something according to the uh, calendar. So, just to hit the nail on the head straight away, there's, uh, and since we are speaking from the dualistic premise, I'm going to put it out there that there are two kinds of people in the world those who have faith and those who do not. And if you're wondering what faith is, then you're one of those who do not. So, this video hopefully will help you. Um, come to terms with an idea that for me has become very, um, I don't know about prevalent, but uh, consistent or um, I live with it. I live, I live a life of faith. I live with my faith and uh, practice it daily. And I'm not a religious person at all in any way, shape or form. Just might move around a bit here out of the out of the there we go is that a bit better um so the um the idea of faith then is uh, something that we take on board as a dependency a total dependency upon our own inner power our own higher um mind or that part of our mind that through the holy spirit is linked with god and of course, you're not going to believe that until you actually take a leap of faith and realize that you're supported by an unseen power. And uh, I like to say that faith is its own reward. And uh, if there's ever an original thought I've had in my mind, I think that's the only one. But uh, faith is its own reward. And when you take a leap of faith, you are rewarded by faith and uh, your faith increases thereby. So um, at this time within the illusion or the fabric of the doings and the comings and the goings of the world, there seems to be a, um, I don't know what you would call it, a, a, a pretense of um, fear or panic or I really don't know how to describe it because I don't, feel it particularly I don't have a resonation with it um, re but regarding the um, COVID and everything like that and I've had people writing to me probably about six or seven people now in the last six or seven months asking me whether I'm going to get the COVID injection or whether they should get it and all these sorts of things and I always refer to lesson 76 and uh which embodies some particulars around the idea that only salvation can be uh, said to cure. And salvation, of course, is uh, the path that we set our feet firmly upon when uh, we realise that, that we're done with fear. I've had enough of fear. I have no use for it in my life. And uh, the time will come when I'm going to lay this vessel aside, regardless of whether that's through um, the particulars of a 
a physical demise through a disease or a, or an accident or a whatever or or whether I just lay it gently aside having fulfilled its purpose, it doesn't matter. That um, that use by date has always been there and uh, will always be there, and there's nothing that you can do to uh, to change the nature of that. However, there is plenty that you can do to change the nature of the way that you feel about it and the way that you see it and the way that you embrace it and uh, allow it and all that sort of thing. So faith then is, uh, and for me it started when I was in my early 20s, um, taking leaps of faith, um, which I guess in a certain sense, um, if I had to express the certainty of my mind regarding faith, my greatest leap, my greatest act of faith um, was when I was about 33. I was diagnosed with subdermal solar keratosis, which is skin cancer. And uh, at that time in my life, um, it came about through the use of uh, chemicals that contain propyl paraben. I was a gardener and there was all sorts of chemicals and things and uh, at least that's where I think it came about from and I had a moment of faith where I realized that no I'm not going to have chemo I'm not going to take on board um, the advice of doctors who um, didn't have any certain answer for me there was just a chance and I thought well there's a, a chance that I'm going to die as well so I either want total healing from this or Forget it, I'll, I'll take my comeuppance, you know. And uh, I pursued the uh, path of faith through many things. It took me many years, actually, until finally it came around to the, the miracle. I was a slow learner. And uh, I tried all sorts of homeopathics and things. Nothing worked, nothing, nothing alleviated the pain of it. And... Uh, Finally, one night watching a video with a group of friends at a, at a meditation centre that I was attending at the time, um, the guy, the teacher on the video said, was talking about heart disease and uh, he pointed at the crowd, you know, hypothetically and said, you there, you have all you have to do is stand up and say, I have no use for this. And at the time um, of watching that video, I was undergoing a severe bout of um, pain and inflammation because of the cancer and... Uh, Without even thinking, without even thinking, I stood up and I thrust my arms up in the air for some reason in, in this dark room with about 30 people watching this video. And I said, I have no use for this. And from my fingertips all the way up my arms and throughout my body, there was this heat, this burning, and it just sort of went like as if somebody got a hot iron, ironing clothes, and uh, I haven't had it since. It's gone, you know, but that was the power of my mind. There was a moment there where I'd reached the threshold of being totally done with um, that condition or that idea that I had made manifest into a condition and uh, my doneness of it matched, if you like, the integrity or my doneness uh, held the integrity within it of um, being true. And uh, I've had... And, I've had many moments where in the advent to a leap of faith, in the, in the leading up to it, I've been praying and asking and nothing's changing and nothing. And then finally you get to like the 11th hour where you just can't take it anymore and the prayer is honest and heartfelt. And that's kind of like how um, faith works. It always happens at the, at the last minute, like at the last, just when you're about to give up on faith, there it is, your faith sustains you, you know, it's like, it's kind of beautiful, but it's a ride, it's, a, you know, there's a threshold there. And uh, I have this little um, analogy, I guess, that um, goes along the lines of, um, I chose to come to time and space. I chose to have this experience and everything that goes along with it, not knowing what it would be particularly, I guess. But um, in my life, I've had quite a lot of um, 
situations presented to me, reflections in my mirror perhaps that I don't like about myself or wish that weren't occurring to me and things like that. And of course, I pray for the healing of my mind, which made manifest those situations and those learning opportunities um, to bring me full circle around again so I can remember that I'm whole and perfect as God created me rather than being distracted by whatever the necessity was uh, that was requiring faith for the healing of it in my own mind. And um, so I liken the situations, let's say you had a, or one that was particular to me was uh, very early on was jealousy. I realized that I was a particularly jealous person many, many years ago, and uh, I didn't like that about myself. And uh, it was at the start of my journey, if you want to call it that, the start of my spiritual determination to liberate my mind from fear and uh, and everything that goes along with fear, jealousy being one of those things, you know, it doesn't make you feel good. And uh, there was a lot of prayer and like, help me, God, help me with this jealousy because there's no other way. <laughs> Can't get a, a prescription for jealousy at the chemist. <laughs> the healing of the mind has to occur miraculously. And uh, I remember nothing would happen, nothing would happen. And I, at, the, at the time, I'd made manifest a particularly beautiful and attractive uh, young woman um, as my partner, and um, she had quite a few boyfriends, I discovered, um, that were in, on the scene before me. <laughs> she wasn't too concerned about all that. And uh, when I found out that jealousy was just like, now what do I do? I really love this woman. I thought I loved this woman. And, and now I love her holistically. But um, the jealousy that it brought up in me, you know, she was a great teacher. She showed me what I needed to look at at that time. And... Uh, I knew that I was either going to heal from the jealousy because I didn't like it in me or I was going to leave her and I'll go and find someone else. But I'd already come to the realisation that a lesson repeats until it is learned and I thought, I don't want to have to repeat this, it hurts. You know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll pray, I'll heal my mind about it so that I can let go of this jealousy and uh, the idea that there was something that I had to control in this person so that she wouldn't upset me or you know, all of these things. And uh, I think uh, these days people say that's narcissistic or um, gaslighting. I don't know what all those things. And um, <laughs> anyway, but my prayers fell on deaf ears, apparently, like God wasn't listening, according to me. And uh, I realized somewhere, and this is before I came into the contact with the Course in Miracles many years before, I realized at some point that um, I'd already had a few little moments of faith, of, of little things happening that I couldn't explain because I'd prayed. And uh, I realized that my prayers weren't being answered. And it's like, maybe I really didn't want the healing. Maybe... And I had to remember, like I didn't know then, but looking back now in retrospect, remembering that I chose for the experience, I chose this, the feelings I experienced and the situations, etc. cetera. Um, but I remember thinking maybe I really didn't want the healing of it. and uh, Or maybe my prayers weren't strong enough or loud enough or something like that. And uh, it was quite some time before... Um, I reached that threshold where I was just so sick and tired of my jealousy that when I put my hands together in prayer and my heart sort of spoke to me the words to say, and it's not about the words, it's about the heart, it's about the language of the heart, how you feel and reaching that point, that threshold where you're done with it, um, where I realised that I'd offered a true prayer and thought, wow, that was a good prayer. I actually meant that. And when I stood up from my prayers, I... I realized and recognized within myself the integrity of that prayer. And it was kind of like, you know, it could have been an award-winning prayer. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But uh, anyway, and then, and of course, the shift in consciousness happens then. But that prayer had to come up against that threshold. You know, there has to be that point of doneness where, no, I'm truly done with this. It's not just lip service. And the same thing happened with my cancer when I was praying and praying and praying. And that went on for years. That was 
from when I was about 25, 26 to 33, I think. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse, slowly and gradually. And there was a point of, like it was worse in my arms, which were out in the sun all the time and uh, somewhat on my face. Pardon me. But I remember at one point thinking I wish someone would cut my arms off and I'm not kidding about that, you know, like, but it was no point in continuing on with my life without arms and a face. So, but that point came when I was up against that threshold of integrity where my prayer overruled, if you like, um, my wish for the disease, my desire for the fear that manifested that disease and uh, taking on board that time and space, the experience of being human is an experience of denial of God, which manifests as whatever here, whatever our fears uh, project out, it will manifest as. And uh, realizing then that I chose this experience, I chose the manifestation of cancer and jealousy. Anger was another one that was uh, big with me actually took a couple of years to heal um, not in the doing of the healing but in the in the coming to the threshold where I was actually um, honest in my prayer about wanting it healed and I was actually afraid to look at it actually I was afraid to look at that anger because I knew that it um, could result in violence and uh, harm to others if it was unchecked and all that sort of thing but again it was resolved miraculously and there was another brother involved in that resolution that helped me that played an incredible part for me to bring that anger up <laughs> so that I could find that threshold point with my prayer you know and uh, it's like it's hard to get sometimes oh now the sun's right in my thing but it's hard to get sometimes to that threshold point instantly you know, so it's like I look at, I have this story about the travel agent before you come to time and space where um, as a spirit, as an, as an unembodied spirit, let's say you go down to the travel agent with your little bit of free will that God's given you and you pick up all the brochures, fifth dimension, tenth dimension, third dimension, oh, death, what's that? You know, and you, you don't know what it is because you've never experienced it before. Denial of God, fear, disease, love suffering, joy, win the lotto, be poor, you know, all these sorts of things, everything opposites, you know, opposites. And uh, it's like you sort of choose, it's like going to any other travel agent, you choose what you want to see on your package tour and off you go. And uh, you might choose, let's say, and I, I like to look at things as an idea of weight, right, of, of how heavy things are emotionally. Um, so you might want a level five emotional heartbreak, you know, like where you're, you're not totally devastated, you know, you're, um, you'll get over it, you know you'll get over it, you're not going to hang yourself over it or anything like that. And uh, hello, we've got somebody coming up the driveway, don't know who this is. We'll pause for a second, go and see what's going on. Anyway. Back again, that was Magella, our meter reader. Come to check on the power, so we've got plenty of power. <laughs> um, so, all right, I, I forget where I was at then, but something about the travel agent. And um, anyway, oh, that's right. Yeah, so we'll have a level five or a five kilo uh, um, emotional breakdown or something like that. I'd, I'd like to put it into a weight to try and explain this, but uh, and maybe you might have a level, a level 10. Um, you know, be caught in a, a, a natural disaster or something or whatever. And you tick these things off theoretically, hypothetically at the travel agent. And uh, really, it's just like jumping into the Colosseum and you don't know what the hell's going to happen. But in each of these situations, they carry a particular weight. So you might be someone who, uh, like me, once would have been particularly jealous. And that jealousy might be a level five or a level seven and it just ah, you know I hate being jealous and why can't I just live and love and not worry about all this jealousy and these stupid emotions and the prayer of the heart has to have that kind of same level of integrity right there has to be an honesty that at least you know matches up with this um 
Otherwise, you're kind of like not reaching that threshold yet where you where you're being totally honest because you've invested five kilos of angst into this thing and there's this other thing. However, disclaimer or not disclaimer, but um, there's a little caveat there that um, you're entitled to miracles, <laughs> right? So if you don't have that, um, if you don't have that sense of just how fed up you are with it, it's like, Lord, I need a miracle. I'm, I'm done with this. I can't find it in me to to bring about the prayer of the heart to that level, to that to, to that weight of you know, and uh, and that's another thing too. There's like catching it in the moment. If you can catch that jealousy in the moment, and if you can put it into prayer right then and there, that's more honest than like six weeks later when you think oh, I should probably do something about that because you've missed the fire, you've missed the bloody boom, you know, and. Uh, but you're entitled to miracles and um, if you're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to work through you for the healing of your own mind that believes in that idea of separation, remember at the travel agent, the experience that we're having is one of uh, separation from source, separation from God. Um, you can be propelled forward. Time will be collapsed for you and you can be propelled forward, which is like a speed up in your own association to that point. <laughs> You know what I'm going to say. To that point where the, the shit hits the fan and your prayer is honest. Right? And uh, you might say to me, well, I don't want to have to get to that point. I don't like all those emotions. They're horrible. I don't want to face all that stuff. And, uh, you know, have faith. Have faith. There's a there's an envelope of grace that surrounds spiritual healing. There's this, you know, despite all the fears of, all these trepidations about what it might look like and what it's what's going to happen when I reach that point of futility and da -da, and all of that. Um, there's something that happens when you take a leap of faith that you're supported by the grace of God. And even though every fear in you may come up about what could occur when you face your anger or your jealousy or your your whatever it might be. Um, the miracle is called a miracle because it's miraculous, <laughs> not because you can work it out. You know, a leap of faith is its own reward. It's like, you know, by your faith alone are you healed, and uh, unless a man liveth by faith alone, he shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is where you already are, but in your own realization of um, where you think you are. The idea that I think that I'm beset by um, the particulars of time and space may seem to be very real to me here. But remember, I'm on a spiritual path because I want to know the truth, which is where I am and what I am always as spirit. And therefore, uh, if God creates in its own likeness, I must be like that and uh, must abide where God has put me, which is part of his kingdom despite the fact that I seem to be able to imagine myself as being this physical thing outside of the kingdom somehow, looking for it somewhere, when in actual fact it's within me all along as not only a state of mind, but as a, um, what would I call it, as, as a portal to an experience of myself, self-realization, enlightenment, salvation, nirvana, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter, but... The experience is essential. There's no point going on a, um, taking on a spiritual perspective and going on some kind of a journey without distance, without time and all that sort of stuff um, if there's no goal to reach. And uh, I often have people say, oh, well, the journey is the goal. You know, it's like, well, no, it actually isn't. <laughs> the learning along the journey is the is the the goal you know the goal is inner peace and as you learn you become more peaceful until finally you reach the um epitome of that peacefulness which is unshakable and your energy just lines up boom with uh, higher mind energy which is singular your energy which is totally peaceful not vacillating for or against um fear you know either way lines up and boom shanker the connection is made and you're gone from here and i say that it in all honesty and all truth, you're gone from here. You disappear. <laughs> the physical world will just vanish before your eyes. Your body will vanish. 
and you'll find yourself back in eternity where you've always only ever been dreaming that you've been here listening to me making this video. That's <laughs> kind of funny. It's like I've got to put my finger back on my nose now having... Um, I'm just going to move this thing. Oh, bum, 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 bum. Put my finger back on my nose and... Um, Take a breath. Mm. <laughs> Let the world go. Let go of everything, just let it all go. Let it go. Don't examine how letting go ought to look like. Just let it go. And uh, on to the next thing, whatever the next thing will be. But we live by the grace of God in this moment and this moment alone. So all that you're asked is to spend a little time each day in meditation, in prayer. Spend some time with God. Whatever your ideas of God are, Spend some time with whole mind. Just an instant will do. Anyway, you're entitled to miracles. Only salvation can be said to cure. You're not a body. And despite what the particulars of the world out there are going to tempt you to want to believe in, that you've asked them to tempt you with, um, you can choose to see things differently. You can choose for God and you can choose to live through faith. And uh, whatever that's going to look like, you know, just let it be. It'll be whatever it's going to be anyway. <laughs> All right, I love you and uh, see you in the next one. Peace.